All right, we are live for our May 25th uh, A Garden in Every Season tour. So we are gonna hang out for a moment and see if anybody joins us. I am out here behind Wyman, one of the original buildings here on the station campus. Weather report from the station, it is warm and humid and is probably going to open up and pour later today. Keep your fingers crossed that we managed to get the tour in before then. There's just a tiny bit of blue sky over there. We'll see if it holds out. Um, everything is continuing to bloom. We've got some dog hobble in fine form right here. Bees were visiting it earlier, keeping me entertained. The moss is green, the frogs are calling from the lake, and life is good. Um, hey folks, thanks for joining us. We're just gonna wait for another moment longer and then we'll get going. I'm wearing a rain jacket because I really don't trust the forecast that says it's going to take another three hours to rain. Last week uh, proved that that's not always the case. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and your holiday especially to join me. I didn't realize it was Memorial Day until somebody reminded me. That's my life and I enjoy it. All right, we're gonna get going here. So today, I think that we're gonna talk about one of the plant groups that absolutely loves highlands. Um, you know, the water running over the dam in the distance that I can hear proves how wet it's been lately. And this group of plants absolutely loves it. There are about 30 in the 400 species that we have here at the Botanical Garden. So it's almost a 10th of our collection and they're featured right here. Any guesses? We're gonna talk about ferns today. Um, so anybody who knows anything about ferns might be laughing at me right now. Ferns can be pretty complicated uh, and reading up for this and in studying ferns just in general, there's a lot of terminology, a lot of minute differences, a lot of you have to be able to see really fine detail to tell species apart. We're not gonna go into that. My goal for today is kind of like a cocktail party. I want, to introduce, I want to introduce you to some of my friends so that when you see them out and about on the street or rather hiking, you're able to identify them and know what they are, treat them like acquaintances. If you wanna become best buds with them, there are a lot of resources that you can use to get really familiar with the ferns in the area um, or ferns in general because they're fascinating. But don't feel that you have to know those things to be able to identify some of the most common ferns. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you want to shout out in the chat where you're watching from, how much you like ferns, if you've decided that ferns aren't for you, that's totally fine. But these should be a couple of, of simple ones to identify that you'll see a lot on the plateau. We're going to start with this fern here. So when I'm looking at a fern, I like to think about kind of the overall plant. What do I notice? What stands out to me right away? And if you guys want to shout out your answers in the chat too, I find that oftentimes people notice or see things that I wouldn't. And so I'm really looking forward to the chance to learn from you all um, as hopefully you guys are learning a little bit from me. So this is a fairly common fern that we've got out here. I notice when I'm looking at it, um, it's got some pale green on this newer growth, but there's a really deep green especially on the more mature parts of the plant. So that evergreen color is pretty distinctive. It's got some dying parts down here on the ground that look like they're on their way out. And if you were able to feel it, I wish you guys were here with me because botany really is a contact sport, you would feel that it's very leathery and tough. And I don't know about you guys, but Leathery and tough are not words that I would normally think of as describing a fern. I usually think soft, delicate, lacy. So it's a deep green color and it's really leathery and parts of it are lying on the ground. And they have been since last fall. This is Christmas fern. And I'll show you guys again. In the fall, these fronds will lay down on the ground where they're close to the warmer earth. And that leathery texture is going to help keep the plant protected as it stays green all year round. This is one of the few ferns that you'll actually find and see around Christmas. 
That's how it gets its name. But wait, you say, look at all of these ferns. Look at everything around the station. So much of it is green. How do we tell the Christmas fern apart when we've got so many other ferns to compare? And that's where you can look at the individual parts of the fern. So this whole stretch here, this piece is called a frond and it functions as the fern's leaf. But you'll notice it's divided into parts and that's really where you can get a lot of the detail that'll help you tell them apart. For example, if you look at, um, sorry, just reading John's comment right here. Ha! I don't, the one that I know of that John may be referencing, I don't think we have in the garden. I believe you're referring to bracken fern, which uh, one of our gardeners has referred to as fuggish, which seems appropriate. Um, Christmas fern is not. Christmas fern tends to stay to itself. And you can tell it when you're looking out in the wild because if you look at this portion of the leaf right below my thumb, it looks kind of like a thumb itself. Um, it's a singular unit coming off of this, what seems to be a stem. But this tiny triangle tip, that's a really good diagnostic because some people say it reminds them of something else that we see at Christmas. Something that might be pulled by, oh, I don't know, eight reindeer? Yes. So people say it's Christmas fern because it's green at Christmas, but also this appears to look like a sleigh. I have also heard some people say it looks like a stocking. Um, others have told me it looks like an elf boot. Whatever helps you to recognize it when you see it out in the wild, that evergreen color, that leathery texture, and then the little sleigh that Santa could be riding in. Oh, you're welcome, Cheryl. Thank you guys for joining me. All of these right here, these are all Christmas ferns. Um, they're about knee high and really it's that leathery texture and then those little sleighs on the end of all the fronds that tell me that's what I'm looking at. I believe some people used to decorate with Christmas fern around Christmas time as well. So we are actually by the administrative offices of the station. If you've ever come in through our um, 265 North 6th Street entrance, you will have ended up here. We're actually gonna duck over here and go into one of the plant beds. I'm going to use my special staff privileges to give you an up close and personal look at these because right here, we have four different ferns. Do not worry, you do not need to know all of them. Again, cocktail party. We're just getting acquainted with a few of the more common ones. This is a really big Christmas fern. You can really see that deep green texture. And we're actually gonna come back here to look at this big fern. For some reference, that's about five feet high. So thinking again, what do we notice about the fern just as we're looking at it? What stands out? Certainly for me, the height does. <laughs> um, this is an unusually tall specimen, but they do get to be pretty big out in the wild. Uh, if you're hiking along Brushy Face Preserve, for example, which the Land Trust protects, there are there's a glade where these are just chock-a-block full out there and it's magical to walk through. So I notice it's tall. The fronds are not as deep and evergreen and they are comparatively delicate. You're welcome, Angela. Thank you guys so much for joining me. So it's always interesting to think about, you know, what sets this apart from Chris? Oh, sorry, I can realize I can hear myself. There's an echo off of Wyman. <laughs> so it, it's very tall, it's more delicate. It has these really big fronds that are, are quite wide. That's another thing that sets it apart. And uh, it's got these, whatever these are. Anybody know what this particular fern is? I'll tell you the two things that give it away for me is the size and then these. The color is described as cinnamon. Uh, I've heard that they can live for quite some time, which is really cool. Um, deep down here at the base 
what we'll find is that there are rhizomes, a root network, and that stays alive. You can see the old stalks from previous years that are here. And if you know more about ferns than I do, please correct me because ferns are complicated. Um, and I would like to make sure I'm giving you guys the right information. But these root networks can live for years, just coming back year after year after year. And what we notice when we look at the fronds themselves, this year's growth, you'll see it's not a single thumb. I've pulled a Christmas fern for reference, which you can see looks like a single thumb. In comparison, these look like miniature fronds in and of themselves. So instead of a single thumb pointing sideways, we actually have a thumbs up from the plant. So the size and the cinnamon color, this is cinnamon fern, um, which we see in a lot of places. And it's in the same genus as a couple of other ferns, royal fern. Um, and then this fern over here uh, is closely related. It's interrupted fern. Because, actually, let me go back to this real fast. You'll see on this frond, there are these dull brown structures. Anybody know what these are? I'm betting John does. These play an important role in the fern lifestyle. These are called sporangia. These release very tiny, single-celled, almost motes of dust called spores. And those spores are going to drift off on the wind and then actually engage in reproduction separate from the fern itself. And that cinnamon color um, and the fact that these sporangia are on their own separate frond is pretty indicative of the cinnamon fern. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. I appreciate it. I'm always glad to show people around here. So we've met cinnamon fern. We've just nodded at interrupted fern. There's Christmas fern. And then I did want to point out this unique guy. Uh, my understanding Yes, John, those uh, sporangia, those dark cases, these are each have dozens of spores in each of these little dots. Um, so they can send many elsewhere. And I was reading an interesting commentary that one author was thinking it's spores might have a hard time finding the right place to live given how many spores are released and yet how few ferns you might find. Um, but places where ferns like to grow, you'll find a lot of them. Has anybody ever been out hiking and seen a fern glade where it's just, you know, ferns knee high as far as the eye can see? We are going to actually see some of those. So we're going to keep going. Oh, I did want to point out, you guys can see our flame azaleas are in fine form. Right now we've got our uh, mountain laurels are also getting ready to bloom. Our red buckeyes are, are through with that, but if you visited Highlands around Memorial Day, you'll know that some of our rhododendrons and then our mountain laurels typically bloom at this time of year. So here in the garden, they're a little behind other places I've seen, but when they do, it'll be beautiful. Hey folks, thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, please drop them in the box. <laughs> um, always happy to learn more. Always happy to get better at this. I triple checked every fern that I'm showing you guys and I'm still sometimes wondering, did I pick the right one? So this is a little area called our moss garden. And you can see, not only is it full of moss, it's also full of ferns. So, they love the shady area. In fact, I'm just gonna give you guys a quick peek at the canopy. We've got some living adult hemlocks that are giving them all this wonderful shade. Hello, Kenny! Yes, we actually offer, I think we're gonna offer a workshop this summer that's unfortunately been canceled, but you can really dig super deep into ferns and learn a lot about them. Um, Connie, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for joining us. 
we're gonna come over here and stop by. I'm gonna introduce you to another little fern that hopefully is easily identifiable. So this fern right here, pay no attention to the ones in the background. When we're looking at this fern, what do you guys notice about it? What stands out to you? Especially if you've been watching, you can compare it to the other two ferns that we've already seen. What do you notice? Yes, Paige, it is very peaceful. And Connie, that's awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. It's um, mosses and ferns, they're one of those groups that we have a wide variety and they're really difficult to identify if you don't know what you're doing. So just learning the basics, just meeting some new friends, so to speak, um, becoming a little bit more familiar with that, what's out there. That's, that's my hope for this particular live stream. Yes, okay, so John is pointing out that these have brown stems. Um, in fern lingo, this frond has actually two names for the stem. This down here is called the stipe, and the part where the actual pin, pinna, that's these little thumb structures join, this is called a rachis. Um, but yes, we can just call it a stem for today. It's brown in the image. It also has like a little bit of a maroon tinge, and you can see that that is shared on these particular fronds, even down here. And what's unique is that that maroon color, and it also extends fairly far up the frond. Uh, so I'm noticing that red stipe and rachis. It's fairly short. It's maybe a foot high, a little bit below knee height. Um, and then there's one more thing, and let's see how all this works out. This is where we start getting into what I call the frilly meter. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. I will pass your regards along. Ferns can look really lacy and delicate. Oh, I like to call it frilly. And so if we think about this in comparison to the Christmas fern, this was a, a single unit. It was like a thumb sticking out. On the cinnamon fern, we saw the thumb sticking up. But here, we get even closer. And what do you notice about the edges of those thumbs? They have miniature thumbs themselves which really lends that kind of lacy, delicate look. This is a southern lady fern, which you can identify with kind of that third degree of laciness, but most especially the stipe and rachis. And the way that I remember it, Christmas fern has the sled, cinnamon fern has those fertile fronds, and then lady ferns put on their red lipstick. That's not I, to say that every southern lady fern will have a red stipe and rachis. Um, they don't always, but around here, if you see a fern with that rachis where the red is going up the stem, it's going to be a southern, red, a southern lady fern. Yeah, ferns are amazing. Connie's pointing out that that's awesome and that she loves those plants. Um, and I do too. So we're going to keep going. You may notice in these beds over here on our rock outcrop, We've got more ferns, and honestly, I'm very grateful that we identify them and that I work in a botanical garden because it's, it's very helpful to have these things labeled when I'm trying to figure out um, what they are. I mean, we've got hairy fern, lip fern over there. We've got a plant coming up called sweet fern that I'm fairly confident is not, in fact, a fern because ferns do not have woody stems. Thank you, Kenny. Um, I work really hard to know my stuff, and I'm, you know, if, if you know more than I do, or if you have something to add, always happy to hear it. So here again, those tall fronds, wide, fertile fronds, cinnamon. And you can just get a sense for how big it is compared to the post. We're gonna keep going up past our biodiversity building now. Don't know how many of you have been up this way. It's a little, not on the beaten path, certainly, but it's a really cool walk. And we're getting to 
what looks like a fern glade. As you're looking out here, you see a lot of green, but you might notice a whole bunch of fronds just littering the woods. Thank you, Connie. I really appreciate that. I would have liked to have known him too. John is asking if all of the ferns that I've shown you are clumping. And I, I, can I ask you to clarify a little bit about that? Because the ferns we've seen so far, all the fronds come from that single rhizome base. Um, so when you say clumping, I'm a little curious about, do you mean do the rhizomes spread really aggressively? Um, if you do, the one that I know of myself is just the bracken fern. Um, but I'm more than happy to reach out to some of our naturalists and look at my guidebooks and see if I can find any others that might fit that really um, aggressive model of growing. Yes, Connie's pointing out that it's very peaceful. I'm hearing a whole bunch of birds sing. Yes, okay, John, the only one that I know of for sure is the bracken fern, but I will look it up. And if I find out anything different, I will definitely get back to you. Um, that's our plants of the Cherokee garden. But we're actually gonna stop right here because there are just two more ferns that I wanna introduce you to. And they actually are right here. So let's take a look at this fern. What do we notice about it? What is it, what stands out to you? Well, dang, I think I put my piece of, oh, no, there it is, brilliant. So when I'm looking at this fern, I'm noticing its height. It's about knee height as well. Um, it looks very delicate. It has an unusual shape. And start here at the top, run down, and it's almost triangular. It's a little bit wider here in the middle. That's all good, Connie. We're actually going to go see the pavilion. Um, the fronds are curving over. Yes, at the top. This triangle shape. Down here, the stem, the stipe and rhynchus, it's actually really fuzzy. And I'll get a closer look here. You can just faintly see all those itty bitty silver hairs covering the rhynchus. And take a look at the pinna. Yes, it is exceedingly lacy. It's not the single thumb the way the Christmas fern was, and it's not a single thumbs up the way the cinnamon fern was. It's even more deeply lobed than the southern lady fern. Very, very lacy. So triangle shape, very lacy. Oh, there's a little spider. Hi, friend. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> um, and then down here at the base, one more thing of note is that brown base of the stipe. Anybody know what this fern is? It is making up the majority of all those little lacy ferns you can see around here. This is hay scented fern. Um, I, to me, it doesn't smell particularly like hay, but that's the name they give it. Sometimes these names are, are dead on and sometimes they're a little bit more, require a little bit more imagination like this fern over here. So I promise you this is a separate fern. <laughs> Taking a look at it, what do you guys notice? What stands out? To me, I notice compared to the others, this is about almost two feet high. This is pretty short, pretty low to the ground. And take a look at that shape. Hay scented fern makes a triangle where it's almost wide at the base, or rather almost widest at the base. This guy has a different shape. He almost looks like a diamond. So he's narrow at the top, wide in the middle, and then down here at the base, he gets narrow again. Uh, Connie is mentioning she didn't know there were so many different ferns. There certainly are. Lenny is pointing out alternate pinnate. Yes, so, and Lenny, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. What you're pointing out is that these leaf-like uh, structures, the pinna, are coming off at alternate points on the stem, on the rachis. Whereas over here on the hay-scented, they come off in pairs. 
So that's one of the fine points. Um, for me, when I'm hiking, I usually don't get up close and personal enough. I just look at that diamond shape and this delicate green color. And then, is it as lacy or frilly as the hay scented? To me, this structure resembles the cinnamon fern. Uh, we got the one coming up this sideways and then up again. It's not lobed around the edges or more divided. Oh, fantastic. Glad that I knew what you were referring to. Um, so this one isn't as frilly and that diamond shape, some people say that resembles a candle burning at both ends. And the connection they make here that I have heard is that a candle burning at both ends similar to people working all day and all night burning the candle at both ends. What's the city on the East Coast where people burn the candle at both ends working all day and all night? So it's a city that never sleeps. Anybody guess what city I'm talking about? This is the connection that I've heard. Um, New York City is supposedly the city that never sleeps and where people are burning the candle at both ends. Um, this is New York Fern. Yep, Connie's got it. So these tend to grow, they're, when I've seen them, they've been fairly short. They grow in twos and fours. Here, they seem to be growing along the edges, but back in the moss garden where we were walking, um, here the, the glen glade is hay scented. Back in the moss garden, the majority of the ferns that we were passing were actually New York. So as you're walking along, you're just looking down at the ground. What do you see? Oh, you see tall, triangular, very lacy, probably hay scented fern. You're walking along on the ground. You see one that's very small and diamond shaped, probably New York fern. So we are out here. In fact, there's the pavilion that guy helped to build. And our dorms, our field. It's a little quiet um, now with the pandemic. We've got plenty of people who are visiting with Memorial Day. And thank you guys for taking time out of your holiday to spend with me. I hope that this has helped you get a little bit of a glimpse into the world of ferns. Uh, and I hope I've told you all true. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for joining me. Next week we'll be doing our June first Monday tour. And then after that we'll take a look and see... Um, how things look for more live streams in the month of June, uh, more programs. We're starting a pen pal program. So if you want to write to the nature center, I will write back. If you have any young friends or grandchildren or children that you would like to have write to the nature center and practice their penmanship, please do. Um, can't guarantee that I will handwrite responses because my penmanship is, is pretty poor. But yeah, John, Connie, thank you guys so much for joining me. I, um, wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So I'm really glad that you guys are here. Thank you. It's very much appreciated. It's great to get the chance to reach out to you guys, say hello, show you a little bit about what's cool about our garden. Um, and hopefully as you're hiking through the plateau, you'll spot a cinnamon fern and know what it is. See a Christmas fern evergreen in the month of December. Know the fern glades you're walking through are hay scented or not. Um, there's more to see. So if you are able to come to our botanical garden, we are open dawn to dusk free of charge. You are more than welcome. Uh, I may not be here personally to greet you or say hi, but I'm here in spirit. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a fantastic holiday. Take care.